Ladies and gentlemen, boys and the girls, welcome to the reissue. I'm joined here by Ben Thomas from the Ben Thomas Show and Marco G, the six scale scoundrel of one six vix. We're also joined Yo. by Doctor Equan. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, so, guys, we've been we've had this kind of idea running around in our heads for a while, and um, I, I'm very excited for this. I'm very excited for this. Um, typically on our own shows, you know, we'll talk about things, but with the scope of what we talk about, how often we do them, sometimes we have to kind of breeze through some things or we don't get to spend as much time on things. Or in my case, the thing I'm talking about today, I don't even talk about that on my show. I don't want to make a, a, its own video about it. And so I, I thought it would be nice for us to have a show where we can like take deep dives on figures take deeper dives on different lines uh, obviously ben's big fan of star trek and there's so many really cool star trek stuff that's coming out uh we also um are just gonna talk about things that you know like sports figures we, we talked about them a few times on cw but they typically you know not everyone is into the sports ball on cw uh and so uh you know we're gonna talk about things like that as well um but marco we're also going to release this in kind of a special way so do you want to talk about how we're releasing the show yeah, so I think we kicked around a few ideas on how to like multicast this stream, but I think we're going to release it on all of our channels. So it'll be a live stream on Collecting Weekly, and then sh just right after the show ends, it'll be uploaded on 16 Fix and on the Ben Thomas Show. So this will kind of be a cross-channel collaboration. So yeah, really interested to know if that's working for people. So please give us feedback as you watch this if that setup is working well for everyone. Yeah, absolutely. And not only that, but uh, obviously we do audio uh, platforms and then Marco does as well for his show. So we'll be releasing the audio uh, fairly simultaneously as well. So um, I think, you know, with some, we have some great shows in the community that are like multi-channel shows, but I always find it hard to like, I like to binge stuff. Like I'll put stuff on in the background and if I'm watching like episode one of a show and I have autoplay on it, it's usually not smart enough to pick up episode two on a different channel and then episode three on a different channel. You're, you're constantly hunting between all the different hosts to find out who has what on, on what channel. And so I think just to make it easy, you know, if Marco gets a few views on this and then Ben gets a few views on this and I get a few views on this, it, I think it's better than just one channel. Cause we've all put in like a tremendous amount of work for the show. So I think I think it'll be a good idea, and especially for Ben, like, uh, you know, I know Star Trek is like really hot in the community right now. We don't get to talk about it, like enough on CW, uh, so I try and um, force it in there a little yeah. bit sometimes. You know, yeah, like, Jesus, we do ben, get to talk about it enough, <laughs> but, you know. Yeah, I think I think some people might say we talk about it too much, um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, let's let's roll the intro. I don't want to don't want to make this last any longer. I'm excited for everyone to see this intro. Oh, this is like we've worked on this so hard, like years of our research and development into this intro. So enjoy the intro, guys. We'll be right back. Another one, another one, another one, another one, and another one. Let's rock. I fucking love everything about that intro. <laughs> so <laughs> good. Oh, I love everything about that intro. Holy <laughs> Jesus. I love it. I love it. Uh, anyways, so Equan's here. Um, so we've been getting real into the Interbay figures, and I think it started with Marco. He bought the hoop with no basketball figures, which is probably hilarious. Mm -hmm. Sometimes um, a deal comes along that's too good to pass up. <laughs> yeah, and then the deal got better, and then you had to get like a, a refund or like a, a money back guarantee or something like that. What happened with that? Yeah, so I bought it, and then I immediately saw it went cheaper. And you know, I'm a guy who will have buyer's remorse immediately. I, like, I want the best deal. And so I saw that they had a 15 day money back guarantee called um, Entertainment Earth. They gave me a refund. It was awesome. So even better deal than I initially signed up for. Hell yeah, bro. Hell yeah. So Equan, um, do you want to tell us the story behind this figure, how you got it? Because you got like an absolute steal on this figure. Okay. Actually, let me tell you um, about the hoop thing too. So I bought it from Entertainment Earth as well, but it went all the way down to $99. And what? Like, oh my god! So I, so then um, I uh, 
I emailed them and then they refunded me the difference as well. But I think Equan, you got to give me a heads something. up on these things. Come on, if you saw it oh, at ninety nine like bucks, this was like maybe five days ago, maybe a little bit less. Yeah. Okay, uh, recently. Um, but anyway, for um, this also started with Marco as well because uh, for the figure, um, there are two figures I was looking for. One was the two pack Kobe. Uh, which I'm still on the hunt for, and then the two-pack Jordan away um, away uh, uniforms. So Equan and uh, I are do, always enabling each other. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. The amount of money I spend just when Marco speaks. Um, anyway. Bad. Uh, so I put in a bid for three fifty for Jordan, and what you do is basically um, how StockX work. StockX works is how uh, you put in a bid. And then a seller can um, accept your bid, and there's like fees, there's like StockX fees, shipping fees, tax, and all that. So in the end, um, I think it came to like like around four hundred dollars um, to get the uh, two pack Jordan, and usually um, it's like five sixty um, for retail. So. I think I got a good deal off of it, so yeah, that's how it worked out. I'm still waiting, yeah, hoping that's, on Kobe though. That's a killer deal. I I want that two pack on BBTS. It's just so expensive that I can't pull the trigger. And then you go and pull off this amazing deal on StockX, and I what keep trying to replicate it. What is it on BBTS? Uh, I'll look really quick. It's like five. Let's see, it is five sixty nine, and it's in stock so on BBTS. No, it sells out pretty quickly. I check it daily. Once in a while, it'll come into stock, and then yeah. uh, I'll text Marco. And by the time it, he sees it, it's sold out. So I was gonna say, when Equan, I liked how quick you were able to reference that price. Like that was one button click away. <laughs> you that always got to know. professionalism right there, I sir. I got all the deals bookmarked. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so what? Do, so what do we got here? This is the uh, Interbay Two Pack Jordan. Uh, and so tell, on, us, tell us what we got. So on the left, I mean, it comes with two figures. Uh, uh, I'm not too familiar with Enter Bay, but um, not a lot of them come naked, so you have to put on everything. So knee pads, socks, uniforms, um, um, and then the uh, warm-up uh, jersey or warm-up pants under the um, shorts. Uh, so the left one is the um, 85 Jordan uh, with the uh, short shorts and the uh, um, you know 80 Chicago uniform and his necklace. Um, and then on top of that, uh, comes with the workout, um, outfit. So, uh, with the workout outfit, um, they're actually Velcro, so you can actually rip them off like players do, um, in the games. Uh, and then, uh, you know, they, you know, he also comes with a pair of white socks and white, um, armbands. And then I put some sticky tack on that ball to, I have them, you know, um, basically try to spin the ball with one finger. Um, oh, that's clean. And, yeah. That's such a great pose. And then on the right side um, is the 98 uh, Jordan. Uh, uh, and then you can see on the uh, base it says last shot, 98. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this one came with the warm-up shorts. The other one didn't. I guess they didn't wear warm-up shorts in the, uh, in the 80s or something. But um, he came with um, all you can see here. If you can see on the hand, he's palming that basketball. I didn't use sticky tack or anything. Uh, they're actually magnetic. Yeah. So you don't have to oh, worry about cool. that part. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. So What's really cool about this set, I think, is the box. Like, um, You have the final edition uh, with the signature on the front. And then uh, you have like the history of 1985 to 1998. And it gives like a breakdown of his life. So... Uh, the Air Jordan shoe design was introduced by Nike, NBA Defensive Player of the Year, just some different accolades that he's achieved throughout his career. Uh, ending with 98 uh, Finals Most Valuable Player, uh, averaged 33.5 uh, points, 4 rebounds, and 2 assists to lead the Bulls to a 4-2 uh, victory over the Utah Jazz for his 6th NBA Finals MVP. Um, Jesus, Equan. Uh, <laughs> Oh, oh, sorry. That was loud. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, and so um, I've actually uh, secured this figure. I got a great deal from a uh, local retailer. and Oh, you got it, you son of a gun. I've secured it. I haven't paid for it yet, but we, okay. we have come to an agreement on a price. Um, 
Now, the one that I'm getting, the I think the 85 version has a broken joint at the arm, so I got to figure out how to deal with that. But it's also the joint is the left arm where it's hidden by that uh, that sleeve. So I just got to figure out what to do. I have a few ideas, but I'm definitely excited to be able to um, have that in the collection. But what's really cool about this set is it comes with every pair of Jordans uh, 1 through 14 or is that 15, 16? 1 through 14, I think. And this is the biggest selling point for me right here. This yeah. is why I want this set. It's an incredible. And all of these are um, super accurate. Like it, it's almost like they scan the sneaker and then like even like the parts of the shoe that are supposed to be transparent with like the area in it. It's like those are actually transparent on the, the figure. It's freaking incredible. Uh, so, Equan, which it looks like you used the first and the last Jordans. Do you plan yeah. to so put any of the other ones on? Uh, no, hell no. Uh, I'll, I'll kind of go into a little bit in detail in that. Um, so for the 85, I wore, I put on, I put the uh, Jordan 1s on because that's more accurate. Uh, it started around the uh, 85 that uh, he wore the 80, uh, Jordan 1s. And then the last figure, I put on the uh, Jordan 14s. Um, he wore mainly the 13s throughout most of the season, but then in the finals, he wore the 14s. So I figured I'd just put the last one on, um, and the rest I just kept in there. The reason is, um, <clears throat> with these shoes, I, I don't know if a lot of people are familiar with Enter Bay shoe or figures with the uh, feet, but the pegs are really long, and um, they don't peg in like normal 1-6 figures. They don't peg directly uh, down. So you have to actually put it at like a 45-degree angle. You have to slip it in push down on the feet and then slip forward and then push down further until you hear like a audible like click and then you know you're all the way in interesting wow so. okay <laughs> we're still talking think, about shoes yeah. right um <laughs> this applies to like life really <laughs> well, pretty much everything so so do they do it like that to make this like the joint less um unsightly like it kind of hides the peg a little bit more yeah, but the, uh, yeah, you can definitely you can't see the peg at all. Um, two things do it: it's the socks and then the joint system. So that, but then, I guess that could be why. Yeah. Yeah, when you look at like a Hot Toys figure, they have like really terrible ankles. Usually, uh, obviously, they're not intended to be seen. But I, I, I really hate the way that they are. But they're aesthetically like really, really nice. Um, it is a huge pain in the ass to take the shoes on and off, but uh, yeah, the uh, the I think the end result is worth it, and the articulation isn't bad to be honest. Uh, even Mario says installing the shoes is a nightmare. Yeah, it's an absolute pain. It literally took me half an hour to put LeBron shoes on, uh, and and I'll talk about LeBron here in a second. Uh, but there's a good comparison shot there. Uh, obviously, these are NBA figures, so they're a little bit taller than your typical uh, one six scale figure. So. Um, I'm really excited. I, I honestly couldn't believe that I was able to secure this set. Um, okay. I just got to work out the finer details with uh, with that retailer. And You don't need two Jordans, though, right? Like, I think you could probably I, part with um, one of them. Probably yeah, just well. need the 85, right? That's it. <laughs> Can happen. There you go. <laughs> I'm so excited, though. I rewatched the, the uh, documentary uh, just to, you know, kind of kind of mm-hmm. get myself hyped up for it, and I'm, I'm really excited, so... Uh, definitely can't wait to uh, pick this one up now. I What's did... the name of the documentary? Is it Last? Uh... Uh, what is it? The I don't know. I, I've watched it twice. Last I think dance? it is The Last Dance. Yeah. Last Dance. Last there dance. You go. I was okay. thinking Last Shop. It's yeah, not it's Save the last... the last Dance. I can tell you that. I there you go. That. That's, so much <laughs> that's the wrong documentary. <laughs> that's a way different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look at this. So there's a detail on the motif on the base. You also get that certificate of authenticity uh, numbered also, which is really nice. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, this is really, really exciting. And, uh, yeah, so I have here the uh, LeBron James figure now. Um, we talked about this on, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, on CW, uh, the network website. Uh, I got this at a crazy deal. It was one, one I think it was 129 And I, I was like, you know, there's no way this could go any cheaper. And surprise, surprise, it did. Last week, um, I want to say it was like Saturday of last week. Uh, this went down to fifty dollars, from three fifty down to fifty dollars, and what? it sold out like instantly. Um, it was up there for a few days. I-, I wanted to pull the trigger, but it was just kind of a bad time for me. 
but I mean, for fifty dollars, like, is an insane deal. I know Equan and Marco got theirs. Uh, they also had the Shack for fifty. That one sold out pretty quickly as well. I think it was like a pre Black Friday sale they were having. Uh, fifty dollars is just insanity on this thing. <laughs> yeah, and what's I'd really be worried crazy, I was getting scammed. Honestly. Yeah, what's really crazy <laughs> is like you can't even buy like the trophies or the body or the shoes for fifty dollars, let alone the whole figure. So. Uh, this is the network exclusive LeBron. Um, I think Interbay is really an interesting company. Like, you know, the fact that they have all these tattoos, they're accurate. I think they scan the tattoos in, which is really cool. Even like on the hands, the hands have the uh, tattoos on there. Um, going down here on the figure, you can see the the shoes looking really nice there. These are the shoes that I guess he wore a few seasons ago. Um, but like I said, you have like that transparency uh, in the ankles, which is really cool on the bottom shoe with the, uh, I don't know if they call it the air unit anymore, but I mean, the shoes are like fully detailed, That's amazing. Uh, yeah, even down amazing. to like the socks with the NBA logo. Um, fortunately this character hides the joints pretty well. Obviously LeBron, uh, with this season, he wore the, uh, the compression pants and then also the right, uh, uh, what is it? The, uh, arm guard there. So really the only joints you have visible, on this figure are the left arm, which, you know, it's pretty easy to hide by just bending it. it I don't think it looks too bad. And then uh, here, um, I, I want to go and look out for um, almost like braces, rubber bands. I feel like that would be a good substitute for like mm -hmm. some, some games he does wear like little uh, rubber bands on his uh, wrist. So I think that would help kind of hide this joint a bit better. But man, this is a really cool figure. Um, one thing I would point out though, if, uh, which is a thing that Interbase struggles with a lot, and, and let's be honest, Hot Toys struggles with it. Uh, even on CW, we're going to talk about uh, So So Toys struggles with it, is dies interacting with things on the figure. So in this case here, the Lakers logo on the shorts, if you uh, kind of bring it in, you can see it's kind of stained purple a little bit. It should be white on the perimeter. But for the price I paid for it, and for a lot of people that got it for $50, it's pretty easy to overlook. But the portrait looks pretty good. The paintwork is pretty decent. Um, I, I wouldn't say it's Hot Toys quality paint, but the um, the uh, the the level of of detail here, you know, everything from the um, I don't want to say iron on, but like the jersey has like that three dimensional st uh, stuff to it, where the numbers and the logos are sort of uh, popped out a bit. Uh, you got the Kobe Bryant patch there on the right um, on the right here above the Nike logo. Even as the Wish logo, they were sponsored by Wish that season. Uh, which is pretty neat. And uh, yeah, this is such a cool figure. Now the network exclusive version does come with the, um, I guess the home jersey, away jersey, it's the white jersey. So you can swap that out. You also get four of the Larry O'Brien trophies, several hands, and then the um, the pregame warm-up stuff. Now Econ How's mentioned, warm-up? I haven't gotten to put it on yet, but it looks fucking awesome. If I was able to get a second one, I would have been, you know... That's how I would have displayed it. Yeah, but I think that's how I want to display mine, honestly. There's a look at the magnet system. It works really well. And, uh, yeah, I'm hoping to get a hoop for him. I think that would be really cool. Uh, but I'm, I'm thinking to get the Giannis, so I think it would be cool to have both, um, you know, LeBron and Giannis. And look at this. Let's let's take a look at this hoop. I think it's yeah, huge. So it's just massive. I, I, there's not much to, like, showcase here because there's not an insane amount of detail. It's just fucking big. So Isn't for the longest time I had... What was that? Is the battery in there? Uh, the battery's oh, not the in there, clock? but the shot clock, yeah, it does have the, the battery as well. So, um, yeah, for I think about 150 bucks is what I got this for um, to add the LeBron finally. So I had the hoop without a figure for a long time. Um, but it's beautiful. Like, it's just really, really uh, nicely done. Very simple. But um, overall, I think I'd recommend the hoop if you can find it for a good deal. So, yeah. What kind of battery does it use, Marco? Like, is uh, it like a, a double question. A or... I think it's not just, one of those little um, watch batteries or anything. So no, like it's that. it's like double or single A, so it's got okay, the little sweet. compartment so back there. It'll last. I think a it's while three anyways. three triple A actually. So nice. God damn. And That's then a few different settings up here. Is it so. is it possible? The chat wants to see this in, in action. Is it possible that we can maybe get a battery installed before the end of the show? Uh, I, I don't think I have triple A, unfortunately. Hey, fucking guy. Yeah, I'll, I'll okay. look to GG, see if I do. Run to the store, GG. Maybe yeah. maybe <laughs> post it on. Maybe we'll post it on Ox after the show. There you go. There you go. Yeah, that's uh, that's really neat. So obviously this show is called the reissue, um, and so we're going to talk. Uh, 
some figure stuff here. Let me just close out that camera. Um, so, you know, we're going to take a deep dive on figures, um, you know, month to month. This is a monthly show. So um, we will um, obviously start with the Mark V. I think that's a, an interesting figure. And when we say like reissue roundup, like obviously a lot of these are remakes, uh, you know, older versions of figures that were modernized. Uh, and then some of them are actually reissues. So we're kind of being a bit vague with the term here, but I think the Mark V is such an interesting release. So we start with MMS 145. Uh, this is the first Mark V that Hot Toys had done. Uh, this one was released around quarter three of 2011. And um, really, I actually don't hate this figure. I think this figure had aged particularly well. Um, you know, you got some battle damage parts uh, in the chest, in the left arm. Um, I, I think it's um, not too bad of a figure. Uh, just kind of scrolling through, you can see they're kind of partnered with, uh, you know, their whiplash figure. Um, and I, I didn't hate this. You got the briefcase. Like I mentioned, you have those two separate arms. Um, I think the only thing missing from this was a portrait, to be honest. But what do you guys think about this? This is their first... Uh, Mark V, again, MMS 145. Dude, I love the coloration on this. So, for me, like, I try to not have too many of the same characters in my collection. I'm not definitely not, a, like, an armor uh, collector. But for the, you know, for the figures that I have behind me, it has that red and gold theme to it, right? With the, with the red and the silver, I think it's got enough of a separation that it would definitely feel kind of like its own figure in my collection, and kind of a standout piece. The other thing that I love is that, like, this is such an iconic scene, such a badass suit. The way it, like, kind of builds around Tony as he's being attacked. I think it's, you know, it's fantastic. The briefcase, even, how it kind of comes out of the suit. Really, really cool look. The figure himself looks a little skinny. I, I don't know if maybe you guys feel that way, too, or if it's maybe just the picture I'm looking at. But He does he look, like, little, tall and thin. Yeah, a little thin. Uh, that would probably be my only criticism, though, because otherwise I think it's an absolutely beautiful option. Uh, and I've seen this guy going for pretty low cost now uh, with some of the Brack, um, Bra the Brack Friday, the Black Fly, well, I can't say it, the Black Friday <laughs> sales uh, that are floating around out there. Not that there's very many good ones, to be honest, but this is one that uh, I have been considering. It keeps going kind of in and out of my basket, so we'll see if I pull the trigger or not. Uh, yeah, I remember I oh, used you're, to you're own this one. Oh, no, sorry. Yeah, I was saying, just remember, this is the, the original one. So the ones that you're the seeing original. on Black Friday, they would be like the... That would be the The, the one we'll talk about here in a second, yeah. Yeah, you're talking about like the plastic one, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is the plastic one. Yeah. This is the plastic I remember one. I had this one a long time ago. Like, bef uh, it was one of the first ones I had. And I remember um, I had this and then the Diecast Mark III. And I remember this one being really skinny compared to the Mark III. And then um, eventually they had the die cast one out. I sold this one immediately. Um, and it kind of scaled a little better. Uh, but in the end, this looks great. I mean, even though it being plastic, it doesn't look too plasticky. So That's great to have that background. And yeah, no, I think from these images, I haven't seen this one in person. But I really appreciate that Hot Toys was attempting to give you some battle damage swap outs. So that's kind of something that's missing with a lot of their modern releases. I know that the reissue, which we'll talk about in a second, kind of has some of those components, but I do love the idea that you could kind of put the full battle damage arm on and the chest plate. That's really awesome. Absolutely. Now, I don't think that this figure had this issue, but it's important to note, like when you're, when you're looking at the older Iron Man figures, um, you always want to look for something called the pink panty issue. Um, basically, like the the figure material back then was plastic, obviously, but the um, the sort of crotch area was made of like a rubber type material, and over time the paint would fade like really really bad on these. And the repair for this is really difficult. You basically have to strip the rubber and then repaint it, and it. Obviously, matching a factory paint job is, isn't, like, a particularly easy task. So, um, you know, if you're buying into some of these older Iron Man figures, like the Mark III or the Mark IV, again, I, I didn't I looked up for about 30 minutes. I couldn't find any Mark Vs that had this issue. But just be careful uh, if you're buying these older figures. Definitely ask for pictures of the figure uh, in good lighting because it is something that you should be aware of. Um, now, this was... Um, 
remade for the uh, MMS 400 uh, D18, uh, and this was a release of Q4 2017 to Q1 2018. Um, this was was quite the upgrade, and honestly, uh, figure wise, um, a lot of people. This was a lot of people's grail Iron Man suit, right? This this is once it's sold out. I mean, you you couldn't touch this figure less than seven hundred seven hundred dollars. Excuse me. Uh, Zach, even, and the the previous release didn't come with the head sculpt, but this one did, right? Uh, yeah, and we'll talk about that in a second. Okay, but okay. Uh, yeah, this one I've I've seen it sell um, in the past as high as like a thousand. Like it was. It was quite expensive to get, um, so much so that uh, it was actually uh, reissued, uh, or two. You know, they kind of remade a, a second batch, and I think that really kind of killed the market on this one. But uh, this one has a ton of neat options. You obviously get uh, a little bit of die cast in the mix. You get some articulating panels. Um, you get the uh, the. I guess like the whiplash arc reactor to, to partner with it. Uh, this one did have a portrait. This portrait was real pretty late. It was one of those ones where they blur out the portrait for the pre-order. And then at, right at the end when it's released, they kind of throw in that edited shot. Um, you do get some swap out uh, battle damage parts. Uh, not as many, I think, as the first release. Um, and honestly, I think the base is a, a step down, to be honest. But uh, this is a great figure. Um, but the weird thing is it's so tall. Um, I know you guys mentioned that the other one looks pretty tall, but the Mark V is supposed to be like a pretty bare bones suit. Like it's, you know, not. I don't really think it's supposed to make him that much taller or that much beefier. But I actually preferred the proportions of the MMS one forty five. I think, I think aesthetically, I think it looks a little bit better to be honest, um, in terms of the height and the proportions. But uh, this was, I think, one of the first times Hot Toys ever did like a side by side. Like, look at how shitty our old figure looked compared to the new one. And I think it's such a weird thing to do, to be honest, because I think I think up to that point, I think people were pretty happy with the 145, but uh, they just wanted it to add add some die cast to that figure. For sure, I I can see it though as being like trying to justify having a reason for the reissue, right? Th this time, you know, like my PTSD around Chrome Mando still exists, but this feels like a pretty still like a noticeable change from the from that first version that we looked at. And I don't mind the height, especially if it compares more to, you know, more modern day releases now, right? Because I would imagine that that first plastic version would look pretty tiny now in comparison to some of the ones that we've got coming out. So I like, I, I can see what you mean in terms of proportions, but I do think that even just from the photos that we saw there, kind of the past release to this one is, is a pretty noticeable change. It was pretty cool. Cool to see. Yeah, usually, um, uh, so this one is taller than the Mark III diecast. Uh, I kind of noticed that immediately. Um, sorry if there's crying. Sorry about that. But um, no, you're you're good, Equa. <clears throat> no, but I haven't actually. I have the Mark VII, but I still haven't unboxed it yet. But I'm just curious to see how tall it is compared to that one as well. So Mark I don't know. If so you're nice on that this yet. one is really tall. I think it's like one of the taller Iron Man figures. Um, which again, again, this is supposed to be like a bare bones suit. It's kind of weird that he's super tall. But I I want to say. I could be wrong here, but I, I think this was like when they started introducing that new scaling for the Iron Man's, where they started to all get really tall, um, where it became like super noticeable in the collection if you had the older ones. Um, but yeah, this was this was an interesting figure, and like I said, it went up to about a, you know eight hundred to a thousand dollars before Hot Toys stepped in and reissued it, and um, obviously that was not without controversy. Um, but I think at that point, when the price gets that high. I think if you had it, I think it, I always say like anytime a Hot Toys gets like two, three times above retail, um, I think it's, you. if you have it, I think you're kind of playing with fire, holding on to it. We've seen it time and time again, the Mark 46, um, obviously the um, Dark Side Anakin is maybe at risk of that reissue. Uh, the 47 coming right as the well. Corner. The 47, yeah, that was, that one was crazy too. That one was really expensive. Um, yeah, this is a... Uh, this is one that uh, is a true reissue. Like I said, they released it and then kind of sold out you know, after a while and got quite hot. But Marco, what do you think about this one? Yeah, so I love this 2.0 that they did, right? This original 2.0. Like Ben was kind of alluding to, it's like a brand new figure. It's like it gave them justification to go back and make a brand new release. It's like it feels warranted. Obviously, they're adding the die cast. They added the portrait, so... These are the type of like 2.0s or reissues that I really love. 
because it's like, okay, obviously acknowledging that the old release was very outdated and they've got a lot of new technology. So yeah, a, a big fan. And they also bulked him up. Like Ben was saying, he was skinny. And so now they, they've really um, made the body look a lot better. And I will just say the silver and red look so good together. Like I have the uh, 46 and 47 and I really want this too. I'm waiting for the price to drop a bit more, but um, yeah, of course I always am How much more. <laughs> yeah, hey, shoot, like man. Soon. I know, right? Soon I'll be pulling the trigger. Um, but yeah, the the red and silver look so good together, honestly. Like I like the 47 a bit more than the 46, which I know is kind of controversial because everyone loves that 46, but that gunmetal silver is just so beautiful. Does it? Okay. The picture on the right, maybe it's just my eyes or the computer screen, but is it, does it look like he's wearing a pink thong in comparison to the even the original plastic version? I know you said that the color match on the original <laughs> wasn't great, but... I'm getting the pink thong feel from this guy a little bit. I think bit. it looks more like underwearish in the right because back then they were rubber on the um again like the panty section, but I think it led to the the I guess like the seam between the joints on the hips being much tighter because obviously that material is flexible and they can they can get those tolerances a little tighter. Um <clears throat> I think on the new figures they usually have those flaps that expand out to accommodate the articulation but yeah i'm seeing it a bit bud it, yeah. like that would i think that would drive me a little nuts in the collection if I, if you could still see that you know it literally looks like he's walking off the beach in a speedo but in his iron man suit you know <laughs> that's cool yeah it looks like he's now, packing a little bit more on that round. <laughs> one could be so lucky a little more than this three one, inches this one did yeah. get uh released and then after a few years reissued now up next um Again, we're kind of treading into like different figure territory, but I think it's we're doing a deep dive on the Mark V, so I think it, we would be remiss to not mention this. But um, they did uh, solicit. I don't think this one's been officially released yet. This is Q3 to Q4 2022, MMS 599 and MMS 600. Uh, really interesting that the 400 slot and the 600 slot taken by a Mark V. So typically, or at least back in the day when I started collecting, everyone was always hyped every time we got to a big like round number for the MS, like, oh my God, what's Hot Toys going to do next? So to dedicate two slots to this figure shows how important it is to their lineup. Uh, but this was an interesting figure. It's almost more like a race suit Tony, and then you kind of get like a few parts to like make a half suited up, not really super articulated Mark V. Uh, but this is a cool figure, honestly. I think the portrait on this one is one of their better portraits of... of uh, of uh, Robert Downey Jr. Uh, I really like the hair on this one and the blood effect. And honestly, um, a pretty iconic scene with the race suit. Um, I, I actually really like this figure. You do get that briefcase diorama that pops open um, and it kind of reveals the beginning of the suit, which I think is super cool. I don't know how many people would actually pose their figure hunched over this briefcase like that. But um, overall, I think this is a very iconic moment in, this, in the film. And even though I don't love this figure like a hundred percent i think it's a really interesting concept and you know the fact that you can kind of pose him in that t pose scene where the suit's kind of building itself around him um i i'm actually really excited to see how this figure releases to be honest dude i agree with that can you imagine if you like had the space in your display for like a rotating turntable so you could have this Fucking guy kind awesome. of on one side and as it turns he suits up and has like the full suited version that could look like a pretty badass display, especially if the Mark V is one of your favorite suits, if not your favorite. I'd 100% go with that option. But uh, For me, I probably wouldn't get this guy specifically. I like the suited up versions uh, more specifically for my collection. But this one's a banger figure. I, I can see why they put this out 100%. I mean, first off, I think that's one of the best head sculpts I've ever seen. And secondly, I can see why they made, it, made this figure, um, mainly because I think the most iconic part of the suit is the suit up part of the suit um i like you can even go on youtube and see like like the views that the uh, suit up of this specific armor gets views on so um, i already have but then again i already have the uh, mark V, so i don't see the need to get this yeah so on that point though so i i do like this release a lot it could have easily just been you know the racetrack suit tony stark and they wouldn't have innovated and gone above and beyond with like the suit up pieces. Like that's just really cool innovation, honestly. But it does lead to some uh, paralysis by analysis because it's like, well, which one do I get? Do I get, you know, the 2.0 version? Do I get this? Do I wait to see if they, uh, you know, release in the US the one with the 
um, the race car diorama. Like there's just too many options when it comes to this figure. But you know, this one's on my radar. If this one drops enough, we'll see what type of rules Hot Toys is using in terms of their runs when this finally releases. But if it sits just like the, the current Mark V is sitting, um, I could swoop this one up and at the very least just display them with the um, with the briefcase and with the race tr race track suit. Now, if they have like the uh, like a three hundred limited edition rate uh, diorama Mark V, which one would you get? This or that? I would probably get this one to be honest. Like if that one's limited, I don't think that the diorama really justifies the inflated price that you know Sideshow will probably want, right? They'll, they'll probably tack on a, <laughs> just like they did with the uh, with the stealth suit cap, because um, I'd rather get a bargain bin price Mark V 2.0 and just like not have the diorama at all. Definitely. Now, um, Ben was talking about wearing a thong here, and on the left, that I, back well, shot whoa, of the whoa. race. For the record, I wasn't talking about wearing a thong specifically. <laughs> oh, well, that's what I heard. Put it out. Oh, just okay. <laughs> rewind the tape. <laughs> Okay, Ben. Oh, I can't um, unsee it but anymore. But look at that race suit on the back, dude. He's got cheeks for weeks, bro. He's got the <laughs> the top section leading down to the bottom. Big selling uh, point, so, to be honest. <laughs> maybe not the best look there on the back. But, uh, yeah, this one hasn't come out yet, but this one looks awesome. And uh, this one did have the deluxe version. Again, this was MMS 599 and 600 in the deluxe version. Is the uh, the suitcase here that you can fold up. And uh, it has, like, that articulating sort of exploding function where you can... Um, pose them up with that. That um, feels like now, a must-have accessory too, right? Like if you're go, yeah. if you're choosing between them, you kind of have to go deluxe on this one. One hundred percent. Now, um, this is the most recent iteration of the Mark V. Um, this one actually does have a different skew. I know Marco's favorite word there. Uh, this is MMS four hundred D eighteen C. This is a Hot Toys exclusive. This is one that we haven't gotten. Uh, over here at Sideshow just yet. And I want to say this was to celebrate one of their uh, new store openings. Uh, but this is the Mark V with the racetrack diorama base. Um, obviously, we panned this one pretty bad with the size of the base. But, I mean, essentially, this is the exact same figure as the Mark V, uh, with the exception that they've added a really too small base and, like, an eighth of a too small car. Um, but... You know, functionally, figure-wise, uh, I want to say this is pretty much exactly the same as what we got with the MMS 400, uh, which is obviously why it shares that sort of similar skew. Uh, but this one seemed pretty unnecessary. Like I mentioned, we had just gotten the Mark V reissue about a year or two ago. And to then have it re-reissued as an exclusive with a weird base accessory is just, I don't know. It's a, this one's a weird one to me, to be honest. We all need a good cake topper, okay? And that's what this reminds me of. Like, one of those, like, fancy cake toppers on your, uh, you know, ninth birthday party. Or my 18th, let's be honest. However, I think the one criticism that I would have, not to pick it apart by any stretch, because I still think it's a really cool-looking figure. It's no, tear it apart, Ben. It's just how different the head sculpt looks in this version versus that suit of one that we just looked at. Like, that one looks like the scene, right? I mean, he's just climbed out of his race car he's all disheveled he doesn't look like practically know where he is and he's to get protected really quickly while this is still definitely a good battle damage version even the hair doesn't match so it's like you this would detract from that display that i was talking about where if you had it on a turntable it could look really cool because it it would look like a different scene almost entirely it's like he styled yeah. his hair before he put his um his suit on which doesn't really make sense. So it's weird to me that they've like continued to reissue the same figure and over and over, but aren't necessarily staying consistent with either it comes with a head sculpt or it does. And if it does that, they don't necessarily match. I think that's a little strange. And I think part of that is, you know, this is, this is a, you know, it's still MMS 400, right? So I think they had to stick with that portrait. It, obviously, if they updated the portrait to the suit-up version, I think, one, you'd have a lot of people very upset, uh, which obviously this made people very upset. So, you know, people people got upset either way. But I think you're 100% right. There's a certain shock in his face that I think the suit-up version captures. This one looks like he's kind of just, like, ready for battle, which, you know, obviously he's kind of trying to figure things out in the moment. 
Um, and I really think that this portrait can't uh, captures that much better. Um, well, even, even just the hair is entirely different, like entirely. Different. It looks like he yeah. styled his hair yeah. <laughs> before. Yeah, he put you're his not suit wrong. On. You're not wrong. So I think that's probably why we see this other portrait. But I got to say about this figure, Marco. It's the biggest piece of dog shit. I hate this figure. <laughs> I hate everything Specifically the diorama base, right? <laughs> so fucking stupid. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Though. No, it looks like they're heading towards the diorama base for each figure at this point. It seems like a pattern. Absolutely. But, you know, if they keep this as, like, the Shanghai store opening <clears throat> exclusive, that it's kind of, like, you know, on, on, on track to stay as, totally fine with. Like, if you want to throw in a cool little accessory that is just kind of underwhelming and then make that exclusive to a territory... I think that's a totally fine way to um, add some value to a release that would have been, you know, underwhelming otherwise. So, but if they release it in the United States, it's just going to be like, for what reason? What was the purpose here? Yeah, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me, to be honest. Um, but yeah, this is this has been our, our deep dive into the Mark V. Obviously, um, you know, some real interesting releases, um, you know, started off with a banger with the MMS 145, but... By this point, you know, we have the 145, the 400, the 599 and 600, and then the 400 D18C, and then, of course, the reissue of the 400. So um, lots of opportunities to get this figure, lots of um, lots of uh, different types of releases. So uh, and especially right now, I think it's it was on sale, I think, like 25 percent off on Sideshow. So definitely a figure that. Uh, I don't say fallen from grace, but when it used to be a thousand dollars and now you can pick it up for like three hundred, it's uh it's come it's come a long way to be honest. So that's like too big of a nut to swallow. Going from can you imagine spending a thousand dollars to get the figure and now you see it going for two oh you hate to see it. it hurts my soul a little bit. And Absolutely. Hot, Hot Toys has to know what they're doing nuking the secondary market, right? Like as long as money's going into their pocket, I guess they're fine, but it's completely destroyed it. Absolutely. Uh, real quick, I do need to check in with the chat. My apologies. We got Duff Fat, Pablo Meza, Doc Smizzle, Mark P, Mr. Mom, Usby, uh, Alvin J, uh, Brenton. Hey, guys. Uh, we also have Dean, the Dream Marty. He says, Mark was supposed to remind me SMH. You uh, hate to see it. Dean, you're welcome to come in, my guy. You don't have to sit this one out. The Hot Toys Nightmare, uh, Filthy Yoda, uh, Mark P, Alvin J, Baby Boy, uh, Doc Smizzle. And uh, Philip the Fool and uh, Bloodsport. Welcome, guys. Uh, so next episode, we're going to talk Gandalf. So that'll be our deep dive. We'll go into all the different uh, license releases of Gandalf. Maybe we'll touch on the Viper release. I'm not sure if I want to get into that one. Uh, but perhaps because it did have a little bit of controversy about it uh, when it was solicited. So, um, Marco, you were going to go in for your deep dive into the... Uh, mech test, and then the 501st. So I'll let you take this away. Just let me know you want me to switch slides. Yeah, so the mech test, I know on Collecting Weekly, we kind of had some debate on whether this figure was uh, warranted for a reissue. So I think kind of the fundamental question I want to try to tackle, and a lot of help from Justin's collection in terms of his side-by-side, -side, um, just really was this figure uh, justified when it comes to this reissue? So if you wouldn't mind going to the next slide, it, I think it kind of shows... The um the head sculpt of the of the uh, 2.0 and then the older version, and so you kind of see, look at like they've come night and day from this head sculpt on the right um, to the one on the left. So for the sculpt alone, I think it it warrants the the reissue. It comes with some really cool exclusive accessories in terms of the faceplate with the signatures, um, in the arc reactor. It comes with dummy. Um, Still, it's an expensive release, but, you know, not extremely overpriced um, for everything that you get. Um, so if you go to the next slide, I think it shows uh, both of them standing. Yeah, real quick. First off, shout out to Justin. Um, perhaps used without permission, but uh, we love Justin's collection here. I would say, though, on this portrait, I, I don't hate the original, if I'm being completely honest. I think that the one on the left looks like in-game Tony Stark where he's got like the he's bags under his eyes. Yeah. He's much yeah. older. And honestly, the one on the right is very much a character, I think, by today's standards. But it it reminds me more of what he actually looked like in the movie. I mean, he, was, he wasn't young by any means, but, I mean, he was not this old on the left, where he's got the bags under his eyes. 
you know, he's got that real thinness in the face that you see in in in, in Endgame and and Infinity oh, War. Sick. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't really love this portrait. If I'm if I'm being a hundred percent honest, I don't love it. I don't think you're wrong. I think it's definitely um, oh, well. they've done better Tony Stark's. Obviously, we just saw the suit up version. That's probably one of the stronger ones they've ever done. But I think overall, it's a really beautiful figure. So um, I think that's I see the last Alvin slide. J we had for this one. Oh, got it. Okay. I think I, I think I put some more, but anyways, um, Alvin J was saying he's waiting to, for this one to go on bargain bin. I think I am mm. too. If it drops to the right price, this is one that I'll definitely be adding. Um, so it's not like a top to bottom restoration of the original release, but, um, for the most part, they've, you know, added a, I don't know, a, a decent sculpt. And can, like you said, a caricature is a good way to describe the one on the right. So I think it warrants the re-release. Absolutely. For that, for that classic suit that we've seen, the classic suit uh, one, uh, that's like the, the comic version uh, of the suit as opposed to like the kind of more movie realistic, I feel like the head sculpt on the right would look badass for that figure. Because that oh, yeah. like the one on the right gives me kind of an animated vibe almost. Uh, I think that would look cool for, for that if you still had this old one in your collection and you ended up upgrading. I don't know if they'd be compatible, but it'd be cool to check out. Definitely. Um now, we did also uh, want to talk about the 501st, Marco. So um, tell, me, tell me what we got here, because, you know, I think a lot of people were upset about this as well, which uh, to me doesn't make a lot of sense. I don't understand why people are so upset about this figure. Yeah, so I think this is a good comparison of, of what they've done with the body. But if you wouldn't mind going to the next slide, or go one more, if you wouldn't mind, please, right there, which kind of shows... So we got the deluxe 501st from Clone Wars on the right, um, and then the this um, Obi Wan Kenobi 501st clone trooper on the left here. So obviously a different paint application, um, different coloring, different body. Um, the one on the left is 230 bucks. On the right, I think the deluxe was 250. Um, so overall, different enough releases that I think that I'm okay with it personally. That they've at least you know gone through and done some retooling to make it more screen accurate to how you saw it in Obi Wan. Now I don't necessarily love the colors or the body, but I think it definitely justifies the release. And you know, with a tease of another figure that may be coming out, these ones could be popular on the left here. So, but what do you guys think? So for me, at first I was like, okay, maybe they're trolling a little bit. They're just kind of adding to the pot of money, right? Same. I thought it was the same figure, literally with just a, a different paint. When we dive into it a little bit more, the one on the left, so with the lighter blue option, that's now from the very first time we've seen real people in costume, as opposed to the one that we're seeing on the on the right hand side, which is actually more compared to kind of the animated verse uh, or the CGI verse that we saw in Clone Wars, right? And so I think when it comes to CGI the bodies always look a little bit on the slender side. And when you see them in cartoon, they're definitely a little bit more on the slender side. When you see this, this to me on the left, the newest one looks more like a real dude in the suit, in my opinion. Um, I also think for the folks that are, you know, trooper collectors, you know, if, if what you want to do is collect troopers and some star Wars, uh, and all of these other releases that we talk about week over week don't necessarily do it for you, and you're just excited about more troopers coming, this, I think, is for those folks, right? That's, you know, they get another release to look forward to, which is really cool. I still think the color is nice. It just wouldn't, like, if you've already been somebody who's bought, you know, six to eight of the ones on the right, this might burn you a little bit because now you're like, okay, well then how many of these should I get in order to army then build devil's those advocate colors? though, devil's advocate. There was going to be sure. so many clones coming out. We, you would have already known. Uh -huh. So if you really went deep on the, yeah. on the, uh, clone words version, you kind of had to know what you're in store for. Totally. Totally. And, and so that's why I'm not really all that offended by this, I guess is, is the point. Right. So I think for, for, as I said, for the folks who are trooper collectors, that's badass. I would like to see what this looks like, especially if it comes with a tease uh, in that release. You know, if we get another uh, Anakin down the line, or even the past Anakin that people have spent all that money to get in their collections, I think this guy would look really, really cool. For me, uh, I would be waiting on a bargain bin deal on, on this guy, especially since it's not a named 
commander, right? Uh, if it came down in price and it, you know, was something that I wanted to add in combination with some of the old school troopers that I've got, I'd probably do one or two and that would be about it uh, to represent the Clone Wars for sure. Yeah, I mean, if you um, didn't get the uh, the first uh, 501st, um, I guess this is a different alternative. I didn't get it, uh, I guess mainly because I didn't really think about it and I noticed that the first TMS-22 was from the Clone Wars cartoon and not from Episode 3. Um, so if you're like a real stickler for things, it might be weird to some if you paired these up with uh, Anakin because he's from Episode 3. Um, he's from a movie instead of like the um, like realistic cartoon version um so i mean you could i'm think i'm pretty sure i think i'm gonna get this one two of these with uh my anakin because these are more based on the live action show rather than the um the uh clone wars cartoon so if you're a st real stickler for that i mean that could be an option for you but if you're a real sticker or equan the the head sculpt that they've teased for that anakin has the glowing eyes right and did we not only really get to see the glowing eyes on Mustafar, not necessarily in the show. So, like, are yeah. if they give us that version of Anakin, then is it still really being? All no, that you still have to use the light side one. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. But I mean, uh, to, like, if you want to choose between live action and cartoon, uh, that's yes, the main thing. That makes sense. But other than that, but you still do need the light side to go with these if you really want to be as accurate Scene as possible. Accurate. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. One thing that's interesting to me, I just realized this, but the um, sort of belly armor is different. I didn't realize that. I mean, obviously, a lot of the armor is different, but it's missing those little uh, dimples, uh, the little dots. I thought, I just noticed, I think that's Oh, weird. yeah, I hadn't seen that before. Um, but yeah, 100%, this is the difference between a physical costume and the, um, the uh, CGI version. So definitely interesting. And, you know, we'll see if we get a mark. Uh, not a Mark V, but the uh, Hot Toys uh, Dark Side Anakin reissue, especially since they've kind of teased it. Again, being in a photo doesn't mean that they're going to release it. But typically when they don't release it, sort of like Bespin Han in the past, it'll just kind of be like in the foreground, not necessarily the main focus of the photo. But to me, the fact that they showed him basically the sculpt and everything, they don't usually do that with other figures like that. Uh, and and some people did uh, zoom in on the um, the um, they did uh, zoom in on the uh, the hilt there of Anakin, uh, which is this photo here, and you could definitely see. I think that I want to say the ignition switch is a little different colored, and the sculpt of the hilt is a little different. So a lot of people are kind of bracing themselves for that eventual uh, re-release, reissue, etc. So. Um, uh, to Hot Toys Nightmare says, I'm a large clone collector with over 20 501st Deluxe. With the new 501st Legion, I have ordered one, and my order one more. I want more clones from Clone Wars and Revenge of the Sith. So, um, Over 20, that's incredible. That's, that's incredible. so cool. For sure. And like he's the type of person that I was I was talking about, right? Like I'm excited for those folks who are still like, sweet. I, get, I can get another figure or two in my collection. That's something to look forward to. Pretty cool. And you know the cool thing is that 501st Deluxe from Clone Wars has such good value. It comes with the jetpack. It comes with three different helmets, um, like multiple weapons. Like I think that was such a great release. I missed out on that, but and and I kind of regret. I was just like, ah, oh, it doesn't have a head sculpt, so I don't necessarily need it. But I would have loved to have a Phase One helmet um, with the jetpack. Yeah, even this, um, the new Five Hundred First, uh, compared with the standard uh, previous Five Hundred First, this one doesn't come with a jetpack, and it's ten more dollars. So that's a little bit of a difference there. Yeah, I mean, also you're dealing with inflation, though. I mean, that is a thing. And with this armor, um, I think it's probably... I don't say it's right that it's more expensive, but this is a very niche armor sculpt that, you know, maybe they'll do a clean version, but it's not like they're going to be able to use this for Episode three clones, right? This is basically maybe from the clones in Andor. I think they were the same sculpt. So, I mean, this is going to be a much more limited release, and they had to completely resculpt i think most of the armor uh whereas the other clones like that armor is the basis for all the commanders that they've made all the um paint variations they're going to make from episode three so i don't mind this one being a little bit more expensive and then also obviously um things just cost more to buy these days so um you know i guess in my 
in my head can and I can kind of justify that a little bit. Um, I'm, I'm 100% certain that we're going to see a new Anakin. This, the, I, I think there's meat on the bone if they don't, which is unfortunate. I know there's a lot of people that have paid a lot of money for this figure. Um, unfortunate for them, but I think, you know, for, I think the overall community, I think this is one that a lot of people want to see come back. Just, just well, like we talked about with the Mark V, though, right? Hot Toys wants to put that money into their pocket and not into the secondary seller's pockets. Mm -hmm. Well, and the cloak that he's wearing in this picture even is a little different uh, than the previous release. So I feel like it's still a nod to the fact that it's probably coming. I don't think it's just a, a bait and switch by any stretch. He Although I would say for some of the, you know, the bad, I'm having a hard time saying this today, Black Friday sales that we've seen this year have been very uninspired by them. Uh, troopers, we're getting enough troopers nowadays where it's like, those to me are the candidates for the buy one, get one 50% off, uh, you know, cause I'd be more likely and more tempted to buy two of those, um, than some of the other figures where I wouldn't want to pay full price for one if I could avoid it and get then only the second 50%. Troopers are great candidates for sale days. It's like, give us more just like day, you know, one day or a couple days in a year where it's like trooper sale day and all troopers go on sale and, you know, you can just kind of build a huge collection in one go if you, if you if you had the money set aside for it. I think that would be cool to see. Yeah, I don't I don't I've never put the hood on my Anakin, but do you guys remember if you can actually like fold it like that without the wire uh, on his shoulders? Uh it's terrible. Honestly, I fucking hated the stock cloak. I want to say this is not the stock cloak that came with the other one. That's why I, part of why yeah, I think this yeah. is a new figure is the hood is much larger. The other one, it was almost like, like a hoodie. Like you were just like, yeah. you know, put the thing on and it just didn't really work with all that hair. But this looks yeah. more like the OSK, the one six kit. They did a run of uh, Jedi cloaks and they, the, the hood on those was like huge, just like the movie. So yeah. uh, I think you're right. And the color looks different too, to be honest, it looks a little bit more brown. It looks lighter. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also sure. since the, first one was a uh, an exclusive do you guys think they're going to do something like a two pack like that batman superman or do something to be well, as different I, I guess it begs the question like what actually is the exclusive part i think the the base for sure and the eyes yeah, the eye yeah. coloring um mm -hmm. i don't know if the eye coloring is enough to stop them from reissuing it because you know obviously it did come out in that regular mms fashion with the light side anakin so I don't know, I, I don't I don't think they're gonna have to do anything gimmicky like a two pack to warrant it to be honest. But I, I think, think people anything, are going to be upset. Yeah, like, I think I think they the they absolutely can't touch that base again because there's no reason, right? These, it was never on Mustafar and the Kenobi show, so um, I think to me that's got to be off the table. Um, but uh, it'll child it'll, Riva, I don't know. Jesus Christ, <laughs> that would be uh, that would be terrible. Um, so I did want to go into, um, for this show, we each have our own little segments that we'll talk about. So, um, the thing that, that really kind of shocked me, uh, over the past few months, and I've been, I've been trying to find an excuse to work in a collecting weekly, but, um, it's been quite difficult. Uh, so magic, the gathering is celebrating its 30th anniversary. And this is from the website to celebrate the 30 years of magic the gathering. We knew we had to go big. We had to create an experience for fans, new and old, that would be worthy of three decades of the original trading card game. We wanted a collectible, commemorative, jaw-dropping, mind-blowing thing that would cement itself in our collective memories as we look forward to the next 30 years of Magic. So they're entering the 30th anniversary edition. So when Magic came out, uh, there was Alpha, Beta. Those were kind of like the first two sets. Uh, and and some of these sets had some really powerful cards. They were called the Power Nine. So these are cards that, you know, back then the game was pretty crazy. There was cards like you know, take another turn, right? Or add three mana of any color to your uh, mana pool. And and even by today's standards, like even just adding one mana or like doing one extra thing on a turn, not a whole other turn, is like game breaking nowadays. So um, they're called the Power Nine. And the Power Nine is, is a very expensive uh, thing to purchase. And, uh, you know, they're part of, uh, I'll, I'll show it here in a second, but they're part of, a thing that Wizards of the Coast has, which is called the Reserve List. So, um, actually, I'll skip forward to that. So, the Reserve List is cards that will never be reprinted in order to preserve their value on the secondary market. It was introduced in 1996, revised in 2002, and again in 2010. So, um, in terms of reprinting, they define that as playable in tournaments reprinting. So, um, 
they have reprinted them for the 20th anniversary of Magic. Uh, they they were printed all of the entire beta set, and you can get it. I think for like thirty dollars when it came out. Obviously, it's many hundreds of dollars now, but they were all proxies, right? So if you look at these cards here, the back of these cards is completely different than the normal back of a legitimate Magic card, and so these are not tournament legal cards, and that's kind of how they skate around that uh, reserve list. Now um, they did uh, introduce Black Lotus, so again, this is one of those game breaking cards. Essentially, it kind of accelerates you to turn three right off the bat. Um, so these are non-tournament legal cards. And essentially the way that they're doing this is um, you'll buy a pack of these cards. And I want to say it's, let me see if I have it here. Uh, so it'll be four packs of these cards. And I just wanted to go through like what magic costs, right? So uh, to get 10 booster packs, you can get 10 booster packs and a bunch of lands for $37 right so you're looking about like four dollars a pack if you were to go into walmart and just pick up a pack um you know nothing nothing too crazy i think like pokemon cards are about that same um same price and these are all for like legal cards right um and again this is for their 30th anniversary so for 40 dollars, you can get a commander deck that's 100 cards with uh some kind of expensive cards kind of in there so that's kind of why it's a little bit more of a premium price when you get like a playable deck right out of the box so for this 30th anniversary, these are very limited production items. So even if you want one, you can't just get it. But the retail price for four packs of these is $1,000. And that has wow. pissed off a lot of people. So uh, <laughs> wow. featuring the original art that inspired the Magic fans, the 30th anniversary edition is built with modern sensibilities and nostalgic roots. 30th anniversary edition will be on sale for the holidays available November 28th for $999 on 30th edition wizards.com. And with magic growing tremendously throughout its past 30 years, we've gone back to our roots with a limited edition print run. Now, first and foremost, a thousand dollars is absolutely insane. One, because you're not guaranteed to get anything good. You could open all four of your packs in this box and receive no power nine. Uh, in fact, there's a guy that has a website where you can sort of use the ratios that they've, uh, released and you'll see how many packs you have to open to get a power nine set and you're talking tens like even like hundreds of thousands of dollars to get the the nine cards which is crazy because you can actually just go out and buy you know really beat up copies that are actually usable of the power nine for less money than it would cost for you to open these proxy boxes and a lot of people are fucking furious that this is a thousand dollars um one i think the price is a slap in the face to people that have supported magic for 30 years you know if this was something that was four or five dollars a pack maybe even ten dollars a pack and you could get four packs for 50 bucks i think people would be much happier it would open it up to the average collector and not the collector that has a thousand dollars to spend on magic cards uh but it, it is really offended a lot of magic collectors and i think wizards of the coast has a, a pr nightmare on their hands um and and they've even said like just even if you have the money it's likely you won't get one like they're super limited print runs and not only that but they've gone and kind of slapped stores in the face because stores won't really even be able to order these uh, guaranteed the stores that you know make magic possible but they were nice enough to say that they will send one to two copies complimentary to each store which again if you're a store and you have uh you know dozens or hundreds of players that that shop your store and they might only have one pack to give or to sell or to do whatever they want with it's absolutely insane to think that like anyone greenlit this stupid ass idea um again you know you might get uh, a pack of four of these which is four packs in the box for a thousand dollars and you might pull cards worth a dollar Right? There's no guarantee that the cards in that pack are worth 250 bucks. You're basically taking a shot at a chance to open up a Black Lotus that isn't even legal and might not even be worth that much. But it's really opened the door um, to, to some interesting things. So this is what the pack contains. So it's 15 cards, 13 cards in the black frame, one rare, three uncommons, seven commons, and two basic lands, plus one basic land in the retro card frame and one additional retro framed card. And um, it's weird because... Proxies have kind of been taboo for magic for a long time, right? Like they're not legal, but you know, if you're playing with your friends, it's usually kind of understood that you can do it. But now that WotC, Wizards of the Coast, is printing proxies, it kind of begs the question, like, why not just go on Etsy and for $40 you can get a Power 9 professionally printed proxy set 
with no hassle and you can just pick it up whenever you want. And, and to me, it, it's, it's an interesting concept. Um, I've never used proxies, but you know, if the alternative is spending thousands and thousands of dollars to get a non-legal black Lotus, why not just spend $40 and get all like the exact cards that you want? And so I think it's brought up an interesting problem for magic, the gathering and, um, you know, it's not a huge bit of news for CW, but I thought it was interesting enough that I wanted to bring it up on the reissue. But what do you guys think about this? That's fascinating. I have a question for you really quickly, Zach, before Ben goes. Have they released, like, expensive packs or anything close to this before? Or is this, no, like, really set no. in the bar? Okay. No, this is this is really, um, really, uh, really, like, you know, they, they make expensive products, right? Like, you know, let's be real. These aren't, these aren't, um... In a, this isn't an inexpensive hobby, but like if you're spending a thousand dollars, you should expect to get thousands and thousands of cards. So this yeah. is that simulator that I was talking about. So if you wanted to pull a Black Lotus, you would spend about three thousand dollars in theory to maybe get one Black Lotus. But if you wanted to get all the Power Nine, you're spending twenty thousand dollars to open 84 packs and that's even if you Goodness. can get them right these are very limited and they were saying like the website's probably going to crash you might only be able to get one but that's with the ratio that they've stated kind of what you can expect so see gg um, it could be way worse you know it, it could be toys or nothing right? compared to <laughs> it could be worse it could be way worse <laughs> um like for example if i just opened a random pack of four these are the rares I would get, and these combined would be worth like four or five dollars. Like it would, and you can't even get it though, right? That's the that's the yeah. You, can, you can't irony. get it, and it's not even worth anything. And people were saying like, you know, if it's going to take me twenty thousand dollars to get a fake black lotus, I could literally buy the real black lotus for like ten thousand dollars and be able to use it in a deck, right? So, it's a really interesting thing, and they've offended a lot of people, and um, it, it's really become a PR nightmare. The Magic: yeah. The Gathering channels that I follow. They've all taken the piss out of this, and it's, uh, you know, it's 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 really like, like if you think about it, like imagine if Hot Toys, like what's a normal Hot Toys cost, like two fifty, right? Mm -hmm. Let me right. let me put this into Hot Toys perspective. So let's do a thousand divided by four, so two hundred fifty. So imagine Hot Toys released a Hot Toys figure that was sixty two thousand dollars. Like that's basically the equivalent of what this is and you only had a chance it was a random hot toys and you might have a chance to get like you know a dark side anakin but it's also wouldn't be the same as a dark side anakin it wouldn't be like it would be different enough that you could tell it was like a fake dark side and it's, it's such a weird like it's bizarre concept it makes no sense and honestly people were really pissed like i remember when i was collecting they released a set called modern modern masters and i want to say it was like 50 dollars for like a pack and that was a tough pill to swallow back then maybe it was a little less but this was like you get reprints mm -hmm. of the best cards of modern that weren't on the ban list or the reserve list and it sold wonderfully I, I thought it was too much i never bought any but um even at 50 dollars a pack i think you would have you wouldn't have had as much outrage because people bought the shit out of modern masters and it's it would sell out instantly people would be lined up at the store to buy buy one pack um but at a thousand dollars for four, two hundred fifty dollars a pack, you have to buy all four packs at once. Uh, it's crazy, and you know there's going to be people that will buy this that do have the money to do it. I have zero doubt they're going to sell out of their quantity, but I I think it sets a bad precedent for the hobby, where you're expecting your most loyal fans to pay two hundred and fifty times the price of product um, for cards that aren't even legal. You can't even yeah. use them in tournaments. It doesn't make any sense. To How me. long until they blame inflation, huh? Frank is fucking cardboard and fucking aluminum packaging. So, um, well, yeah, I guess the other stupid question. Oh, oh I can read this here. So, casual yeah, nerd ahead. problem says, uh, sup peeps, uh, companies have caught up with the aftermarket prices. This definitely would sell at the same amount secondhand. Uh, nostalgia, uh, sorry, nostalgia and FOMO will make this sell out. Uh, makes sense for the company, not for us. Totally agree. I think so. Again, stupid question, maybe because I've, I've never collected uh, cards like this. Like if you were going to put that kind of money into this and you ended up getting one of those super rare cards, like would you ever actually play with it? Or would, is it something that you then would get CGC'd and like framed? Probably. Probably. Yeah. Because yeah. I mean, like for that kind of money, like there ain't no way I'm putting it down on a table with a diet open, you know, can of Diet Coke sort of thing. <laughs> like, oh, can you imagine how devastated you'd be? E even if yeah. it got a slight crease, it would just, 
or you'd get robbed. Like, I'd be worried, like, I wouldn't want to bring it to a... Tur like, I guess you were saying it's not legal in tournaments, but still, like, that is insane in, in terms of cost. You'd want it on a wall in plastic casing, period, I would think. And yeah, yeah, Magic players are notorious for robbing one another, right? Being real tough guys, so... I mean, you know, maybe. I no, I'm kidding. That's, that's a consideration when you're walking around with that type of Hey, uh, if I saw item. somebody with a $20,000 card, I might I might wow, trip them in the babe. hallway. I'm just you're saying. you that guy, just, huh? I, yeah, Wow. Yeah. Wow, it's, it's funny how it says modern sensibilities. It doesn't seem pretty sensible <laughs> yeah. to buy any of these things. Um, yeah, do you guys remember? Um, I think it was last year they uh, they re-released the uh, or reissued the Pokemon cards, like the first set. They yeah. did something special. I remember the stores were going nuts, and they this was like a wide release, and people were going crazy for these cards, and even Target had to put. Like uh, printed out a uh, sign saying, "Oh, we don't have any Pokemon cards here." Oh, I do remember and that. And people will be lining yeah. up outside the store and everything, and that's for a wide release. The stores only get one of these, so what, what's going to happen? They're going to be last man standing against the pack it. or something. Probably a raffle, to be honest. It's just crazy to me, to be honest. Um, but enough about that. I don't want to spend too much time on this. But Ben, we have the tough nut Trek news. What do we got here? Yeah, so uh, there's been a lot coming out with XO6 lately. Uh, obviously, they've put out some, probably some of the most releases from any company in, in such a short period of time for a while. But this Kirk uh, came out uh, about a week ago now, um, and it was interesting. So the picture on the left, you can see there was an Ultra HD 4K release of the film, so the motion picture, uh, last year or this past year. And it was something that I actually got to see in theaters. It was a really cool to see it kind of remastered and, and redone. It was definitely needed uh, for the film. Uh, and it took it to a new level in terms of enjoyability and watchability for sure. Still not my favorite Star Trek film specifically. I would say from this era of Star Trek, The Wrath of Khan, uh, Search for Spock, Undiscovered Country, some of the other films in their kind of canon, uh, I prefer more. But this was the first uh, film that they'd done. And... Kirk here, or uh, William Shatner, he kind of reprised his role as James T. Kirk and came into the, the movie sphere. And this was the kind of the first, like, iconic film version of the, um, you know, Star Trek suit that we got a chance to see him wear. Now, in some photos, uh, the, the suit does look like it's gray and white. In the remastered version, and apparently for what's kind of like reality, it was actually green and white. So they did keep that with the XO6 release. If you want to move slides there, Zach. The interesting part about this guy was when this was... So this has been teased by Nanjin, the developer of XO6, for a while. They keep saying it was coming and kept saying it was coming. But there was no um, edition size that was listed for this figure. And so he said it was going to go up and it was going to go up for immediate purchase. So kind of, you know, be ready, but didn't necessarily specify exactly when. Um, it came out a couple days before it was released that it was releasing on the... on I think it was like the Thursday or the Tuesday... Um, and literally within three hours of release on the XO6 website, this guy was completely sold out, gone, um, which is crazy. Now, came in at $175 plus $25 shipping on XO6's website. He comes with virtually no accessories. Like, basically what you see in this photo is pretty much what he comes with. He doesn't even come with a second pair of hands. He comes with a one-to-one -one scale, uh, Delta badge, which I think is cool, um, Originally, it was supposed to be Magnet. I think they switched it to a pin. Um, but that was from Fansets, is the website. And if you missed on this release, but you wanted that Delta badge, you can actually still go to Fansets and, and buy one, which is kind of cool, separately. A little bit of a collaboration there. But in terms of scaled-down releases, this had virtually nothing with it. Now, the fact that it sold out that quickly... Um, was a bit of a concern, at least for me, only because, well, because of a couple of reasons. So first of all, because we had no edition size, nobody knew if they should pre-order it right away or not, unless it was something that you absolutely had to have in your collection. There was no real, there was no real, for all the other XO6 releases, we've had kind of a window, even the immediate purchase ones, there's been a couple of days where you can kind of warm up to it and decide whether you want it. 
and whatever. I got the notification in the morning that this had been put up on the website, and as I said, by the time I got a chance to make my video on this for the Ben Thomas show, that afternoon it was already gone. Pre-orders did go up on Sideshow. Sideshow is already at waitlist. The only other place I've seen it now that was still available for a pre-order status, I think, was um, Pop Culture. That was yesterday. But even still, hard to know if you know we're going to get an email from them at some point to say, oops, sorry, kind of over-promised it's gone because the next slide here uh zach if you want to go to go to it uh ninja and the developer he put on this facebook there just the other day um that kind of like buyer beware there is no more even for him apparently being like the developer of this company he got one and that is it like they are sold out they're gone if you damage your figure there's no replacement parts there's you'll just get your money back like that's it like if you got your hands on one great if not you should have a luck. So again, it seems like a bad a, strategy. It seems a terrible. Of, a it seems a terrible bad strategy. He also made it sound in his Facebook that he, he basically kind of like launched a grenade into the production side, which was basically like we've decided that yeah, no, we're not, we're not like that's it. Like the mold is done for this guy. Like if you got him, great, good for you. That's it. He's off the production line. We, I think he said he literally burned he and deleted, deleted, deleted the, files. the molds and the files. Yeah. Like, like kind of like super aggressive uh which doesn't make sense i get making something super limited i think that's okay um but if it's going to be that limited at least tell people how limited it's going to be at some kind of addition size so you could be you know kind of like movie tickets or not movie tickets i said concert tickets or nikes or any of those types of things like you can be ready on the website hovering over the click button um because again this is going to it's going to skyrocket this guy in terms of value, I'm sure, on the aftermarket. Some people probably got a couple. Hopefully you got a second one just in case you damage your first so you can have some replaceable parts yourself or sell your replaceable parts on the aftermarket and probably pay for the figure itself. The next uh, figure in this lineup is the Spock that they've teased. And they're saying that the Spock is going to have a very similar style of release window. It's going to go up for immediate purchase. Um, and then, like, let, let's be honest, like, is it going to be gone just as quickly? I think the challenging part there is that if a lot of people didn't get the Kirk, should you even justify getting the Spock? I mean, Spock just might be your favorite character, <laughs> but can you have a Spock without the Kirk, especially from this film, and feel like you have a complete, a kind of a complete collection, right? Uh, and then the bearded McCoy, they have teased that as well. Um, I think the bearded McCoy looks like a hobo. I think he's kind of funny looking, but it's it is very iconic uh, of, of a look for for bones. So I think that's uh, that's pretty cool. But these are the three so far from this from this film. I think if I was going to um, you know consider this for my own collection, obviously I, I missed on the Kirk myself. I, I had an opportunity to pull the trigger on a pre order with Sideshow. And decided not to, um, because I wanted to kind of, I, I was hoping to see what these guys would look like in hand <laughs> uh, before I made that decision. Some of the Exo6's uh, releases haven't been, haven't been the greatest. Uh, like, some of them have been really strong, and then others have been a little on the weak side, like the, the Catherine Janeway uh, and the Michael Burnham. Some of those ones were a little soft. So I was worried that people would jump on this guy, and then it would end up being soft in hand. But it's hard to know. We're never really going to get a chance to know until people start receiving them now. The You're release not going to know window... if it's soft in hand, Ben? <laughs> yeah, tough nut. Um, I think the interesting part, too, is that they want to keep the release window really small uh, in terms of getting it out to people. So they had said this was going to be a 21-day turnaround. That was already about 10 days ago now that this release uh, came out. So that gives another kind of 10 days, I would say, uh, for people to start really seeing these in their collections and in hand. And uh, we'll have an opportunity to see what it looks like. Uh, MWC but was... uh, Toys actually has their review up already on this one. Nice. So people people do have this in hand, Some but I'll be it. completely honest. This is one of the stupidest fucking things I have ever seen. I don't understand the... Like, I understand wanting to keep something limited. I, I 100% understand that. And I guess if deleting the files is your way of, of resisting that temptation in the future, that's fine. But... I think it's the hallmark of a good company to be able to have replacements, parts available. You know, Ben, you might order this, you might spend your money, and it might just might get lost, right, in shipping. That is 100% a thing that does happen on occasion. You might be posing your figure and something may break on it, um, which is a common issue enough that I've seen many reports 
um, on some of these Facebook groups in Mexico 6. Not that Hot Toys and other companies don't have that problem. Sure. But I think I think for you to to intentionally not have replacement parts or even accidentally or oversell to that point where you do not is a terrible business practice. Now, I have not seen Star Trek the motion picture, but I would assume that this character is quite important from what I know of Star Trek to having this full crew, right? Can you imagine if you finally get the full crew after a year or two and then you break something on your Kirk or something gets damaged and your only option is paying absorbent secondary prices? Now, obviously, in that case, replacement parts wouldn't particularly help you, but, um, you know, even just getting it right out of the box. Let's say there's a stain on your uh, on your figure's outfit and that's not your fault at all. I think that's a, a terrible, terrible precedent. Um, I've seen it with Hot Toys figures that arrive with stains on them with many other figures and um to me to me it's it's a weird weird business practice now he's said in the past uh nanjim that you know he there's no extra copies of figures in the past but he's never gone to this point like i i thought it was implied back then and we talked about our patreon chat like what if someone's thing arrives damaged whatever but for him to basically blatantly say there are no exchanges or replacement parts to me is crazy well and Sean i think it's i think here. it's 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 a terrible uh, terrible practice, and uh, you know I, I don't I don't like it. Sean Sorry, Forster nailed it in my opinion here too with his comment because he says uh, Star Trek uh, the motion picture is considered one of the worst films. Without the limited feature, this might have just sat. And I, that's kind of where I was at when I first saw pictures of this figure. I was like, well, I'll wait for the Wrath of Khan versions. Like those to me are are more iconic films. Suits they come with a lot more features and accessories and all of the things. Uh, better movie. Overall, when people think of the original movies, I mean, The Wrath of Khan is almost the first one people say. The only reason that I liked this film more was because of the 4K update uh, that I mentioned at the beginning there. It did make the movie better, um, but still, it's definitely not my favorite offering. I agree. I think the fact that it's it's gone was because it was so limited. Um, mm. Casual Nerd Problems also asked, you know, if... If, if it's something that, like, you know, a, a numbered edition or if this is kind of just a one-off, like, what would sit better with collectors, for me, I again, I think if they were going to make it this limited, then they should have numbered it, at least, but told people that it's, you know, limited to 300 or limited to whatever it ended up being. Because, again, for everybody who's got a pre-order still in other places like Sideshow or Pop Culture, some of those areas, like, are they even going to get stock if Nanjin himself can't replace his own stained outfit? Like, that... Like, that doesn't even make sense. Like you said, Zach, yeah. it doesn't even make sense. Um, so I think I think it's a bad business practice for them uh, to be so aggressive. I, I do think that he's trying to appeal to, to the people who don't like reissues and say, basically, like, we won't reissue it. But you can, you can draw that line in the sand without devastating your files. Like, XO6 is notorious for having wrist peg breaks on their figures. Yeah. And they don't even give you any additional wrist pegs in the box. So if you break a wrist peg, and they're not necessarily standard pegs, like you can't just take a Hot Toys one and swap it over, uh, they say that you have to send your whole figure back for a, for a wrist peg, uh, which also doesn't make any sense. So, like, again, not that you can swap hands for this guy, because he doesn't come with anything else. Like, what you see here is what you get. Um, if you break a wrist even, like, you're, you're, you're toast. That's it. You're up shit's creek. Like, what are you going to do? Send your one-of-a-kind Kirk back? I wouldn't. I wouldn't even trust it. <laughs> like, so you'd, you'd end up gluing it in, and that would be that would be it. So uh, I think people will gravitate more to the Wrath of Khan figures that are coming down the line uh, in terms of, like, what they actually want in their collection. I think the people who, drab, you know, grab these were definitely looking at the, the limited uh, release option of it. For some people, yeah. it's probably their favorite film, but not, not necessarily for me. I agree with Sean. So to clarify, he does come with fists. Um... So oh, he does okay. have Apologies. one set of hands. Apologies. But even just looking at this outfit here, like, I mean, there's certainly spots all over this mm -hmm. outfit. And I don't think that the re the reviewer has done this to their figure. But if you're telling me that right out of the box, like, I'm screwed that I can't get a replacement to these spots that are all over this figure. Like, I don't know. I don't love that. Like, that. I mean, that's clearly, like, that would piss me off if there was this white outfit with, like, seven or eight little gray dots on it. And I'm basically being told that, hey, you get a refund or that's it. It's just weird. Just and weird. I know Bill, Bill Shatner is notoriously hard to... Uh, he's one of those faces that's notoriously a little hard to sculpt, it sounds like. 
Uh, I do think this looks like them. I think that the oh, I have no problem with the for the price and all that. I think it like I think it's okay. Like I, even though as I said that he comes very bare bones, I think it was a good price for it. It's just it, yeah, it's just it's the experience for the collector. I think is is the challenging part. At least at least yeah. Them. No, I have no problems with the price, the portrait. I think the portraits may be a bit dark. You know, if if we're saying Gandalf is a bit dark, I think this is a bit dark also. Um, again, it's a white outfit, <laughs> though. Care. So I, yes. I cannot stop laughing at the deleted the files, b- burned the mold, shot the artist that sculpted it. Like, why is it so I just, dramatic? I picture him walking into the factory with like grenades and just like <sighs> toast. <you know? laughs> I think overall, this is this is my rating of this figure. I mean, it's all right. Like, <laughs> anyways, um, Marco, one six fix your segment here. Tell us what we got. Yeah, do you have another clip about uh, what I'm looking most forward to with my segments? Well, um, I think I'm looking forward to cracking up. Uh, I hope I can, like, you know, totally crack up. So uh, I haven't, like, totally cracked up in a long time. What the fuck? <laughs> another one. Oops, sorry, I got to click too oh many buttons. Gosh. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Love man. that clip, bro. When you, when you brought that up, I was dying. Um, yeah, so PSVR 2. So... My my segment will be called the one six fix, and I'm totally not going to talk about any one six today. So, um, but yeah, PSVR two has been announced. It's coming out in February of next year. Five hundred and forty nine dollars. So that does God come with damn. the updated controllers. Yeah, um, it's insanely expensive. Ben, what did you pay for your God of War um, bundle? For my bundle Canadian, I got it uh, for eight sixty, and that came with an extra controller. Uh, and that was right at GameStop. So with American, that would probably be what six ninety nine somewhere in that range. Okay, got it. So yeah, so so near the price of this, right? And this will end up, we'll double it. you know, right? So this will this will end up costing a, you know just about as much as the console at the end of the day. I do have the PSVR one, and I love it honestly. Like it's really rudimentary. Like the the contrast and the um, resolution is really low. Um, so I'm excited to see what PlayStation does for this next level. But this was a really niche product. I don't think PSVR sold like insanely well. I know it was popular in terms of VR offerings. Um, but yeah, this is kind of an insane price point. But I do appreciate that they're trying to, you know, compete with the higher end um, units. And obviously with the popularity of um, PS5, they're probably thinking like, okay, here's just another thing that we can sell. But yeah, I, I'm i very tempted, but I think I'm going to stick with the PSVR 1. Zach, if you wouldn't mind going to the next slide that kind of has some of the specs. So it's got an OLED, it's got OLED um, screens, which is pretty awesome, right? So on the OLED, you'll get the really rich blacks and um, really high resolution. So the panel resolution, I don't know what, you know, there's, I'm seeing numbers here, but I don't know necessarily what that's going to mean until I put it on. But um, it seems like it's really improved. And then obviously the refresh rate. So it should be a lot more immersive. And I just kind of want to talk about VR really quick in, in your guys' experience. I know Zach has a unit, but... Um, even the PSVR one, like I was saying, it's pretty low resolution, but it doesn't take too much to trick your brain into thinking like you're in a different place. And I was like pretty blown away the first time I tried VR. I was in a Best Buy. They had like PSVR, like a, a, a demonstration basically. So the guy sat me in the chair and he's like, oh, you can choose whichever adventure you want. And I chose like underwater. I was like, oh, underwater sounds cool. Well, they lower you in a cage until there's like a great white <laughs> that's a great white shark that's swimming around your cage. There's like all these strangers around me watching me do it. I was fucking sweating. It was terrifying. But after that experience, I was like, I need to have one of these immediately. So VR is like one of those things that you can't really appreciate until you actually try it. So Zach, maybe I'll start with you and then see what everyone yeah. else is. So I have the MetaQuest 2 or the Oculus 2 and i love it it is awesome you know i I don't really play a lot of like realistic games so i have like a combat simulator game where you like have swords and you're like you know fucking slashing goblins and stuff and it's pretty fun um i've uh played a lot of beat saber a lot of um table tennis and what's really nice is the physics of it right so i don't play table tennis so i wouldn't know but there are professional uh table tennis players that say the feel and the physics of the way the ball interacts, you know, putting the spin on the ball and everything is very accurate. There are some things that are maybe a little bit easier in VR so with a grain of salt, of course, but you know, the fact that you're able to simulate a table tennis match and I can play with Cody in Washington table tennis and have a fairly fun, realistic experience is insane. 
the graphics, like you said, I mean, you're not getting 4K VR, unfortunately, but um, yeah, it does work with Pornhub, of course. Uh, but it, you know, it, it works pretty well. And uh, there are times, uh, there's a roller coaster game that we have where you really do feel like the pit of your stomach kind of fall out when you're, you know, going through the the different uh, tracks. So. Um, I think the Oculus is, I think the gold standard or what everything would be compared to for VR, in my opinion. I just think it's the um, the best one at the moment, but I'm very interested for this price point because I think you can get the Oculus for like 300 bucks, uh, brand new. And it's so, all wireless, right? There's no wire coming yeah, out. Yeah, there's, of the... yeah. I mean, you could, some people do, the battery lasts about like two or three hours, but some people have it where they have like a battery pack hooked up to the headset so you basically drain the battery pack first and you kind of like double your battery life. But yeah, the, the, the entire thing is wireless. Even like when you plan your PC, it's all wireless. It's like, I think it's like Bluetooth or Wi-Fi or something like that. But yeah. Um, no, actually I take that back when I, when I did flight sim VR, which didn't work particularly well cause my computer sucks, um, that I did hook in through USB C to reduce the latency. But I mean, you can also play it completely wirelessly. Crazy. Yeah, and so that's like the one downside with this, the the PlayStation ones, is they always have a cord. This one, it seems like they've simplified it to just have one cord, because with the current VR setup, it's like a mess of wires and boxes, and uh, it's yeah. really unsightly, so I had to like hide it really well, because I hate cords. Um, and one other thing, horror is like incredible in this, like I, I tried... A Resident Evil 7 for about five minutes and I was like fuck no like I can't do this and I had to play the game in 2d but uh then what's your what's your experience with VR so it's funny because I've wanted really good VR I think for my entire life uh especially from my love of Star Trek I always loved the holodeck on Star Trek the next generation I always thought that was like a really cool concept um and so for me in a video game world some of my favorite video games of all time are the ones that have world exploration where you can, you know, climb to the top of a mountain similar to like, you know, Vic uh, Valhalla uh, Assassin's Creed. You can climb to the top of a mountain and look around and everywhere you can go or everywhere you can see, I should say, you can go. Um, putting that into VR is something that I've, I've wanted really well done. And you can the play Skyrim game... on this. Yeah. So the only game that I've, I've tried on VR, though, is No Man's Sky. And that's a really fun game for the very same reason, right? You can go up into space, you can look down on planets, you can go and down onto planets and explore whole planets. Like, you can walk around, they just, like, dig holes. Like, like just, you can do all the shit, but it's, it's just, like, really immersive just being able to kind of feel like you're standing on a planet that you landed on, which I really, really like. Um, for me, the price is definitely a little bit of a deterrent on this new unit, though. Uh, like you said, Marco, like, for me, I just got the PS5 finally, um, after, you know, two years of searching for them, like, I finally was able to get one. It'll be curious how many of these, of these they actually make, like, how, how readily available are they even going to be? It's probably going to um, be because, a really limited run at first, like, the first unit, I'd assume, well, to, yeah, to build that right? FOMO. And, it, and that's it, like the price is as as is is expensive there's no way i'm going to spend a thousand bucks to get it secondary or or you know from a scalper who got it first so if they don't make a lot of them it's going to be something that I, I probably don't even touch for another year or two um the other thing is is that obviously i would hope that sony and i think dj actually said it in the chat here really well like i would hope that sony really supports the VR then, if that's the case. Like, if this is going to be the price, if this is the direction they're going, I don't want it to just be gimmicky. I want, like, games that are really developed for the VR system. I want them to really dial it in and make it worth the worth the money. Because otherwise, it, that it will be something that is, you know, something I throw on occasionally, and then it sits and kind of collects dust for long stretches of time between games that I would use it for or not. Um, so that, that will be a bit of a... A wait and see, I think, uh, in terms. Yeah, and of I think this is kind of justified. A, this is kind of like a fool me once um, situation where it's like the first one they supported a bit, and they had some really good games, but it wasn't like an incredible catalog, mm -hmm. and they haven't really said that it's like fully backwards compatible. So who knows? It's kind of wait and see, like you said, on on the support from Sony. The only other thing that I'd say about VR, and it was same with with three D. You know, like when three D was becoming a big thing, three D always gave me a headache. Uh, VR is the same way. I can only play for about an hour, uh, and then I start getting kind of like a head 
a headache uh, from from the vision uh and like i don't wear glasses anymore i got lasik surgery a few years ago so even that like is at least kind of a win i might not have that same experience uh because i previously was trying to do it with uh with corrected vision but we'll see we'll see i if they don't give me a headache i can get some longevity out of it and they really support it i think it would be something that i'd consider there you go and equan have you had any yeah. experience <laughs> I only played one game, and it was Resident Evil 7. Um, I got as, I don't know how far you got into the game, but I got to the dining room situation where I had to escape, and uh, that gave me some heart palpitations. Yeah, and not even that far. There. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, no, that's the only time. And then I had a patient that um, apparently, if, you have, uh, if you're prone to epilepsies, then you can have seizures from using the VR headset. So this one patient... Um, was on the second floor uh, living room and they had a seizure and they fell down the stairs and fractured their ankle. So be on the first floor and make sure you don't have seizures when you or don't have uh, symptoms of seizures when you use Very this Very good advice. Wow. wow. Doctors in the house. Jesus. <laughs> wow. They should put that in the warning label. <laughs> you really should. <laughs> they fall down stairs. Um, very interesting stuff there. Um, we have one more segment, um, our Mommy and Daddy of the Month, which is, I think, a fan favorite by this point, even though it's our first episode. Uh, so, Marco, this is this is the our favorite male and female protagonists from this month. So I'll let you, uh, or we will introduce, rather, the Mommies of the Month. So uh, go ahead and take us away, Marco. Yeah, so, you know, Mommy of the Month, Daddy of the Month, what does that mean? I think it's just like the most badass characters from all of the properties that we love, right? So yeah, um, it doesn't hurt if they're attractive, but that's not it's not objectifying them. You know, it, it could be a really well-rounded character. So first, uh, Lupita Nyong'o, uh, Nakia from Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. So incredibly beautiful and badass in that film. So had to give her a nod. Um, Mommy Bix, obviously. Of she course, just, of course. If you haven't seen Andor yet, what are you doing? You got to see Andor, but... Um, Bix was really a standout uh, character. And then old and young uh, Princess Rhaenyra um, and um, Alicent Hightower. I think all of those iterations of the character really resonated with me personally. And I know, Zach, you and I have been chatting a lot about these. But which one of, of these stand out? Uh, I think uh, Olivia Cook stands out, honestly. Absolute baddie. Absolute baddie. Um no, but I, I think her portrayal of uh, Allison, I, I honestly think going to win some kind of Emmy. Like, if not shocked, I would be shocked. I would be shocked. Um, Bix was great also. Um, obviously uh, had gone through quite a lot in Andor. Uh, I don't want to spoil anything, but real crazy. Um, Nikita, Black Panther was such a great movie, and I thought she was one of my favorite parts of the movie, to be honest. Which is surprising. I, I didn't even know she was going to be in the movie, to be honest, because I don't think she was in any of the commercials. So, I think um, just this one shot. So I didn't want to put any spoilers, but they showed her in this one shot in the trailer. You know, I think you're right. I think you're right. Um, yeah, but I think these are all great choices. I think I think the nerddom, we've had a lot of great, uh, really important female leads, which is always great to see. And uh, yeah, I'm excited for, for next month to see what uh, the nerd nerddom brings us. So for me, I, it, it's, it's a hard selection because all of them really brought some badassery to their, to their characters. One of the things that I liked about all four offerings here was that it wasn't kind of, it, hard, hard to say, it wasn't like shoved down your throat that's like, look how badass these women are. You know, it was, it was just they were because they were. And like, and I think that was a really strong takeaway from, from all of this castings. Um... I, I, I'm having a hard time deciding which one was my favorite because I like them all for very different reasons. Um, but I would say for me, my favorite probably was Lupita actually um, in in the Black Panther. I went and saw that film uh, by myself uh, during the day, and uh, she was one of the one of the characters in the film that I, I liked the most. And, I, and again, I want to try not to give away any spoilers just in case people haven't seen it, but. Uh, the one scene where she, you know, is in charge of kind of a rescue operation there, like, very badass, uh, very, very badass character. And so, um, but again, all of them, I think, were, were fantastic offering. I would just say that for, for at this point, Lapita was probably my, my favorite. 
Uh, I haven't seen Black Panther 2 yet, um, but I think for me it's like, uh, it's between uh, Mommy Binks, Bix and... Uh, Mommy Binks, Olivia bro, that's Cook. different. It's a different... <laughs> no, no that's a Mommy completely Binks. different category. That's <laughs> in the other category. Um, so it's between uh, Bix and uh, Olivia Cook's character. Um, so, yeah, towards the end of the season... Uh, she didn't. She looked a little worse than for her wear than um, uh, Olivia Cook. Now, um, it's hard to really decide. I guess I'll pick um, the. Um, I'll pick the queen for this one, uh, Olivia Cook for that one. Um, I mean, she does have a little Smart bit of choice. a hammer toe situation, but I mean, it's all right. I mean, it's a little I figured bit of you'd appreciate it. For well, that hang alone. on. Here we yeah. go. I mean, it's all right. Like. Yeah, but it's forgivable. It's fine. Now I need to yeah. look up what hammer toe is. Yeah. <laughs> Equan says I may have a hammer toe, so who knows. Um, mm. All I got to say is for Olivia Cook. That's why he's the goat! The goat! <laughs> Bro, that Savage Fenty commercial. Some gabagool right that there. That was an eye opener. Uh, for <laughs> Daddies of the Month, uh, because we're equal opportunity here. Um this is uh, I don't know this actor's name, but he's he's coming on Creed three and Jonathan then Majors. the MCU. Thank you, Jonathan Majors. If you don't know, dude, you will he know. is fucking yoked in Creed. Holy Jesus! I remember when they said he was gonna be in the MCU, and I was looking up. Uh, you know, we were just like looking up the actor. He didn't look that big, and I was thinking like this motherfucker's gonna be. Uh, what's the character? Uh, the Conqueror. Kang Anyone? the Conqueror. Kang, Kang the yeah. Conqueror. Thank you. That was Krang. Um, we got it's Namor. Tam-tam. AKA Mark, Marco, uh, Damon, and Andor. I gotta give it to Andor, bro. What a fucking. And that's a hard one because Namor was fucking awesome too, and Damon was awesome. I think, I think, um, Kang, I don't think we've seen, we've just seen him like in trailers and like kind of getting bulked up for the role, so, uh, but he is pretty yoked. But dude, Andor is such a fucking badass character, like, bro. The season finale, like the whole season, to be honest, but the finale especially, uh, incredible. Absolutely incredible. I got to give it to Andor. What a great show. What a great actor. I'll be honest. I wasn't excited for Andor. I didn't think it really needed to have a show, but honestly, now I can't look, I can't wait until the next season. Like it was such a banger show. Such a great fucking show. Mm-hmm. And and I, th- just real quick, um, that message isn't about the woman for fuck's sake. I just watched the intro for this show on replay. What? What does that even mean? That message isn't about the woman for fuck's sake. I he don't know said something is. about an eyegasm. <laughs> Didn't know my eyes could orgasm. And he oh. meant that was about the oh. introduction and not the mommies oh. of the month. Oh, there you go. We'll play that again here in a second. Um, yeah. So, Alberto, the question isn't pick two for a threesome. Initially, we were just going to pick like the, the hottest question, female though. actresses of the month. But then all of our significant others were like, well, you should do it for the men, too, for the ladies that watch. And we're like, you know what? It's 2022. Of course, right? Let's let's look at some of these handsome male leads that we have on uh, that we, our eyes have been blessed with. Of course, Marco picked the most fucking seductive photo for Kang the Conqueror. My goodness, <laughs> bro! Come on, you, you can't look at that and not feel something. I'm just Alberto saying. says he picks Marco, so he wants to have a threesome with Marco. I guess. <laughs> Anyways, um, what what do we think here? So for so for me, I I do agree that Andor, uh, like and I, again, I won't give anything away in the show, but that show blew me away it went from being a show that i literally wasn't looking forward to at all uh to easily one of my favorite shows i think of all time would i choose him as daddy of the week though no i would go back to of the month sorry thank you i would go back to daddy of the week uh i would go back to uh marco or namor i think namor was very cool he was um like I, I wasn't familiar with his with his comic representation. I, I honestly, up till now, hadn't really known anything about the character. When I heard that there might be a character um, that could have like wings on his ankles, I was like, that sounds really random. And like, what? And like, I just wasn't. I didn't. I wasn't excited about it. And after seeing the film, I was like immediately thinking, like, six scale. Like, I want a figure in my collection. There's a couple of scenes where I'm hoping that they give us that in in figure form. 
Um, very cool. Damon, I did like Damon uh, throughout the season. There were, there were aspects of Damon that I really didn't like uh, in Game of Thrones. And then he, war- I, he got kind of warmed up to him and then I kind of hated him again. So like it was a bit of a roller coaster uh, with Damon. And obviously we haven't seen Creed 3 yet. I think Jonathan Majors is going to be insane in that movie, like intense. Um, and he's a beautiful man, let's be honest. But uh, just the acting chops of, of the actor who played Namor and um, and what he brought, I think, to that film was uh, was amazing. So I'm really excited uh, to, again, hopefully get a six-scale representation of the character in my collection, hopefully. But he's the pick for the month for me, 100%. Yeah, um, I guess I have a little bit of a Latin bias. So, uh, you know, it would be uh, Andor and Namor as... Uh, the top two for me uh, I haven't seen Black Panther yet so I'm not too sure about his character uh, but I did see Andor um, now if you want a guy that says a reliable guy that says he's going to come back for you then uh, Andor is your man so I guess I'll pick Andor for this one and also uh, in our household uh, the wife's all about uh, Diego Luna too so yeah love the criteria love right there yeah. yeah right. And I would would apply the same, honestly. Um, this is a tough choice. I think Jonathan Majors may be a bit premature. I think he's gonna have a hell of a year coming up. Um, when we see him in a lot of films. Hot Toys might have to invest in some new bodies, honestly, if they make figures for <laughs> for him. The dude is just absolutely yoked. Um, I'm gonna give it to uh, Namor, and this is uh, both from myself and Gigi. Gigi's obsessed with him, like she thinks he's like his representation in the film was awesome. And on the representation front, I just love that two Latinos in properties that I love, like Star Wars and Marvel, it's just really cool to have that. So we're going to give the nod to Namor. Tell me you're going to do this for uh, Halloween ooh, ooh, next God. year, though, right? You're going to get your Please, ears. bro. I will be there a little bit. You could easily shave your beard <laughs> to look like this. Like, dude, like, oh, come on. Please. You have to have a Halloween stream as Namor. You know, neck year. up, but I've been in the gym, but I'm going to have to do three a days to pull off. Like, the dude just, was just. All we see you was from the neck up. We just need to see yeah, what those beads and, right. and earrings <laughs> yeah. That I can you do have easily. To do it, dude. Have <laughs> your buddy 3D everything. print some of that shit and fucking Heck get yeah. a broom and put some fucking we got gold paint on it. Put some on your ears I want to see you as Kukukan next year. All right, next year. I'm going to promise it. Um, anyways, that's our show for today. I really appreciate everyone coming in for the inaugural episode of the reissue. We'll play the intro one more time and then we'll say our goodbyes, but I, I, th- I think it deserves a reissue on the intro. What do you think, Marco? 100%. Yeah, love it. We gotta, re- we gotta run that back. Another one. Another one. Another one. Another one. And another one. Let's rock. What a legendary Man, that score intro. kills me. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Gigi says, obsessed is an understatement. Please don't compare Marco to Namor. It's going to ruin it for me. Wow. Anyways, thank you guys for joining. I really appreciate everyone that watched today. Uh, we'll be uploading this to Ben and Marco's channel uh, here within the next hour or so. But, uh, but yeah. Yeah, Gigi loves it too. Anyways, I'm Zach. I'm Ben. I'm Marco. I'm Equan. Let's ride, babies. See you guys.